Hey, nice computer. Oh, thanks. I bought 40 GPUs to do some text processing. Huh. Well, now you just need one. Hello world, it's Siraj, and Google just released a new language model called the Reformer that's able to process text sequences that are up to 1 million words long using only one accelerator and 16 gigs of memory. What that means for you is that it's now easier than ever before to build a surprisingly impressive app or project that can generate text, classify text, categorize text, or summarize text with a low-cost computer. In this episode, I'll help you understand what makes the Reformer architecture unique compared to its predecessors, and we'll repurpose Google's simple Python demo to ingest an entire biology textbook and help us answer questions we have about its topics automatically. To truly understand the Reformer's architecture, we've got to wind the clock back to seven years ago. It was 2013, the year the movie Sharknado was released. It's so bad that it's good. Up until that point, the field of natural language processing consisted of rule-based and heuristic techniques that worked well enough. But when a model called word to vec was released that year, it changed how developers thought about natural language processing. word to vec was a neural network that was able to literally turn words into vectors, aka numerical representations. And this numerical format allowed us to apply mathematical operations to these words to compute results. We could say create an expression using vectors like king minus man plus woman and it would output yas queen without the yas. We could visualize these vectors and see how similar words clustered together or use them to help make other types of models more robust. This technique was a new lens with which to see the world of data, this way of learning representations rather than applying rules to raw text. Then in 2015, a model called FastText extended the word to vec model by treating each word vector as the sum of a series of character level vectors. Doing so allowed us to represent rare words, words that didn't show up that often in the training data more robustly since characters are often shared between words. Two years later, in 2017, Google released an architecture called the Transformer in a paper titled Attention is All You Need. In the paper, Google showed how they achieved state-of-the-art results in automatic language translation using a concept called an attention mechanism. This attention mechanism allowed their model to not just ingest all of the input data during the training process, but instead pay attention to the most relevant parts of the input, the parts that matter most to make the most accurate predictions. This in turn helped reduce the amount of training time necessary by a large margin. So by early 2018, there were some powerful open source models available for anyone to use on their own text processing projects. But to get really great results, you still needed lots of computing power and lots and lots and lots of data. That is until Google released BERT, or Bidirectional Encoder Representations from Transformers. They modified the original transformer architecture to take the full context of a word into account when learning from it. BERT's bidirectional nature learned a word's context from both ends of a sentence, i.e. bidirectionally. They trained BERT on an absolutely massive amount of text data, including all of Wikipedia and 800 million words from books, and then open sourced it for anyone to use as a starting point for their own project. That moment, the release of BERT, might just have been the most significant contribution to the field of natural language processing of all time. Similar to how convolutional networks changed computer vision forever in 2012, achieving state-of-the-art accuracy during the ImageNet competition. Because BERT was already trained on so much text data, developers could leverage its knowledge to quickly and easily train NLP apps for a huge range of tasks without requiring huge data sets. Tasks like question answering, machine translation, text summarization, sentiment analysis, text categorization, dialogue systems, and common sense reasoning all became very accessible to build. And if you didn't want to use BERT, you could just use the slew of BERT variations that were released by other companies throughout the rest of the year, like Ernie, Elmo, I love these Sesame Street naming conventions. Roberta, XLNet, GPT-2, Transformer X, and my personal favorite, BioBert. 
BioBert was BERT retrained on biomedical domain knowledge from experts, and its variations included an automatic diagnostic app. Just give it your symptoms, and it will tell you a preliminary diagnosis, including possible treatment options. So now it's 2020, and Google has released the Reformer architecture. They've re-engineered the Transformer architecture to be much more efficient in terms of speed and storage, or in more computer science-y terms, its space and time complexity are much better. To do this, they used two techniques, locality-sensitive hashing and reversible layers. Let's dive into why they used both of them. Let's say we have a sequence of words in the form of a book, and we want to learn from it. We wouldn't want to use a feed-forward neural network since they aren't meant for sequential data, where all the inputs are related in some way. We'd want to use a recurrent network. But while recurrent nets are great, their sequential processing nature is not well suited for the parallel processing nature of GPUs and TPUs. We could maybe use convolutional networks instead, but they tend to get computationally expensive for long sequences. Sorry, Jan. Let's just discard recurrence and convolutions entirely. Maybe all you really need is attention. If we're reading a mystery novel and we're trying to remember the most relevant characters, we pay attention to certain words more than others, namely character names. This internal mechanism we have allows us to interpret text data faster since we focus on the most relevant parts. We can mathematically represent this as an attention mechanism. Think of it as a vector of importance weights. In order to predict a given element, like a word in a sentence, we estimate, using an attention vector, how much it's correlated with, or attends to, other elements. Then we take the sum of their values, weighing them by the attention vector as a proper prediction of the target. Attention can be thought of as a clever matrix math trick that makes training time faster, but the attention mechanism used by the transformer architecture took way too many words into account when trying to understand the relationships between them and thus the memory footprint reflected that. So in the reformer paper, they used a hash function to match similar input vectors together. A hash function takes a group of characters, also called keys, as input, and maps each of them to a smaller length ID called a hash value. The hash represents the original input. Too many words, my input's big. Watch me hash it, I like to hash it. Hash it, hash it, I like to hash it. So when feeding the network input text, each vector from layer one represents a given word. The hash function will then give similar vectors the same hash value. And once these hashes are given, the input sequence is reordered to bring together similar vectors based on their hash and chunked to enable parallel processing. It's only then that we apply attention to these much smaller chunks, which makes the training process much faster. They call this technique locality-sensitive hashing because sensitivity is so 2020. More seriously, in their own words, a hashing scheme that assigns each vector x to a hash h of x is called locality-sensitive if nearby vectors get the same hash with high probability and distant ones do not. Okay, so that was the first solution. The other one was an idea introduced in 2017 called reversible layers. The way neural networks are trained is by using a technique called back propagation, which Grant Sanderson made an excellent video on. It's basically a way of propagating the lessons learned during the training process to the entire network. This process, however, requires storing what are called activations in memory. So the more activations, the higher the memory footprint. Activations help a network learn the optimal function from the data to make predictions. Instead of storing all the activations in memory, the reformer recomputes the input of each layer on demand during the backpropagation process. Two sets of activations are kept for each layer. One captures changes to the first layer, and the other captures the last layer. Thus, using subtraction, the network is able to recompute the necessary input values during backpropagation without having to store it all in memory. Sick, right? But what better way to understand the reformer than by playing with the code ourselves? Let's take a look at their text generation collab demo. First, we'll need to install JAX for hardware acceleration and TensorFlow for deep learning. Then we'll load a biology textbook from the Gutenberg library into it instead of the example they used. 
Okay, boomer. Then we tokenize it using the sentence piece processor function. In order to prevent overfitting, we'll add random padding to each token so the model does not just memorize the data set completely. It'll be able to add some novelty to its generated predictions. Clearly in this example, there are a lot of hyperparameters that we can configure here and no doubt the values of what these numbers should be will sprout multiple papers this year. Then we can use the tracks library, which they decided to wrap this model into to set up a trainer object. Once trained, we can sample from it, giving it a seed sentence and it'll fill in the rest. I'm pretty excited to see what NLP researchers come up with this year. The primitives have been defined, attention mechanisms, sequence learning, and gradient-based optimization. Now the next phase is to tune and dial up these models a million fold to produce amazing results. The winner of last week's coding challenge is Bintang Aswam. Bintang submitted this aircraft design repository, which isn't exactly a healthcare app, but it's still cool. So good job, Bintang. I've got links to some great learning resources for you in the video description. So hit that subscribe button, like the video, and happy learning.